praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, welcome Emerge Worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, clap your hands. Wave your hands in your home. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory, God, the glory, God, the glory, God. Oh, glory, God, oh, glory, God, oh, glory, God. Oh, glory, God, glory, God, glory, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, keep worshiping, keep worshiping. Hallelujah. We almost there. Hallelujah. 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 God, we worship you today. Lord, we worship you today. Lord, we worship you tonight. We give you glory tonight. Hallelujah. Because you're the same God today that you were yesterday. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We hope you feel welcome. We hope you feel the presence of God even through the screen. We thank you so much for joining us every week, every Saturday. Your faithfulness is not going unnoticed. We thank God for you. So if you don't mind, let's pray. As I was preparing for tonight, even singing and ministering, I was talking to God, and he told me that there, there is an after this that we need to prepare for what's going to happen after this. Yeah. This is why we're still stuck in this moment because he's preparing us for what's going to come. He wants us to have the faith and he wants us to be prepared for what's going to happen. So I'm going to pray for your preparation today. I'm going to pray for your faith. I'm going to pray for your strength because some of us are waning because it's been taking too long for things to go back to what we used to be. And now we need God to strengthen us in the area of our faith and in our courage and in our discipline. So let's pray. Father, thank you once again for this day. Thank you, God, for this opportunity and this moment. I just want to say thank you for hearing me, God. I stand here knowing that you always do and that I'm not worthy of your goodness, but you've been good. Thank you for your sustaining power, your keeping power. Thank you, God, for your love towards me. Thank you, God, for your love towards us. Because the people standing behind me are evidence that you are still good and you're still keeping. Now, God, I pray for those who will be listening, those who will be watching. Some of us, our faith and our preparation is waning. I ask you, Lord, to strengthen us in that area. I ask you, Lord, to give us the courage we need to continue to press on and to press towards the after this. I know that there's a glory after this. There's a power after this. There's a resurgent after this. And God, we need your presence today. I ask you, Lord, to put us back on that wheel, to mold us, to make us, to shape us. Make us more like you. Oh, I like that. Mold me, Lord. Make us, Lord. Shape us, Lord. Make us more like you. Mold us, Lord. Make us, Lord. Shape us, Lord. Make us more like you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Now, God, bless this time of worship. Let it be impactful for those who need it. Bless the man of God as he comes to deliver the word as usual. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, come on, let's praise his rise.
is for you. You're to be glorified. Come on, y'all. You're to be lifted high. All I want is for you. You're to be glorified. All I want. All I want is for you. You to be glorified. You to be.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, Pastor Nick here with another Emerging Worship Service. We hope you enjoyed uh, our Emerging Worship group. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. This is our service for our young people, millennial on down. Um, as we come together, our youth praise team sings and uh, try to give you word and be able to believe God together. Um, we hope you're enjoying uh, our Emerging Worship Services. Please do me a favor and share, share, share as much as possible. Let people know we're on today as we continue to learn about the kingdom of God. We're in a series about Jesus and the kingdom and he came to preach the kingdom. And this kingdom um, requires faith. 
And we're going to continue to delve into faith. We started this last week and continue to talk about how faith is effective in the kingdom of God. Come on, let me pray for you first. Father, thank you for this moment. We appreciate you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for how you've allowed us to see this day. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would begin to open the hearts and minds of all of us so we can hear your word. We can understand it. We need your insight. We need your guidance. I pray that you would save somebody tonight. Reclaim a backslider. Connect someone to this house. We believe in Jesus' name that the word will be effective and it will work. In Jesus' name, amen. So for the past few weeks, we've been talking about Jesus and the kingdom, talking about who Jesus is, um, him being the son of God, the son of man. And his primary purpose is to preach the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom? If you uh, missed it, the kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. God has a purpose. He has a method. He has a way of doing things in the world. And he wants us to follow that way because we have a way, but it's not the best way. He has a way. It's the best way. Ours leads to destruction. His leads to life. Which means I have to learn to trust what God asked me to do and trust him that he knows what he's doing. It's quite frankly, um, no matter how old you are watching this, we don't always know what to do all the time. We thought the decision we made was the right thing, but it turned out to be the wrong way, which tells me that there was another way of doing things. And Jesus has that way of doing things. So <clears throat> uh, we start talking about faith last week and kingdom faith. And we talked about how uh, faith is the substance of things. I mean, faith is required to please God that we need faith to uh, make sure that he is pleased. And when we have faith, we come to him, we come to him and believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. First dimension of my faith is to believe that God is. I believe that he exists. And then he rewards those who diligently seek him. Faith is also important to the word of God too. In Romans chapter one, verse number 16, it tells us, that the gospel is the, the power of God unto salvation to those that believe, which means the word, the gospel, is only effective in my life if I believe it. So when you read the Bible, you have to have faith. When you hear the gospel, you have to have faith because why? Faith opens the door. Faith allows me to receive the word of God, the benefits of it. Where when I read the gospel, when I read the story of God in scripture, I'm reading it not just for a, a lesson or for a good story. I'm reading it so it can change my life where I read it so it can start to affect the way that I live. But in order for it to be so, I have to have faith. In order for me to experience the fullness of the gospel, faith is required. So we started talking about what faith was and we talked about how faith is a conviction. Um, Faith is commitment. Faith is perspective. Faith is trust. Faith is perseverance. Now, last week we got caught up on this, talking about faith being a conviction. Conviction meaning that it's uh, uh, an inner persuasion, it's an inner conviction. It's something that I'm sold out to. I just believe it. You know, I'm convinced of it. As they say, I'm, I, I know it's real. It's, it's, it's there. That's what faith is. I'm convinced of this thing. Now, the challenge of faith is that faith is beyond our senses. We believe in something that our senses can't pick up. I can't touch it, can't smell it, can't taste it, but I can believe in its existence. The Bible says that, uh, that uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's not talking about physically eating God because you can't physically taste him. However, he's saying, try him. And he's using the analogy of tasting him and you'll see that he's good. That's faith right there. I don't see that he's good. Then try him. I try him and then see that he's good. 
Faith says, let me test him. Let me, I do I use the word test. Let me try him. Let me experience him and I'll know him to be good. Some people say, well, I'm not going to believe in God until I experience this. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to believe God exists until this happens. No, God says, no, faith first. Taste and see. Try me and see. And I'll show you that I'm good. Now, last week we got caught up on this uh, verse, and I'm not going to stay here too long. That Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance. Things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the foundation. We talked about this last week. If you missed it, go back and watch the video. Faith is the foundation. This table right here can act as a foundation for this laptop. My hat's over here, some water's over here, these candles and stuff over here, remote control here. Um, it is the quote unquote ground. It's a thing that's holding these things up. This is what faith is like. And I put these things on this table, expecting it to be able to hold these things up. Faith is that's how faith works. I, I expect something because I know it's strong enough to hold me up. So I can trust in God. I can believe in him. I can expect him to do what he says he's going to do. And my faith is the foundation of that because I trust him enough. I believe him enough that my faith becomes the foundation, the platform of my hope, positive or negative. And if we get to start talking about this, we won't finish like last week. So, so my faith, my faith, what I believe in dictates what I expect. If I believe it's always going to be bad, I'm always going to expect bad. If I believe in the goodness of God, I expect to see the goodness of God. Because God has already promised us his goodness when we have faith. Doesn't mean bad things won't happen. It just means that I learned to trust him enough that my faith, watch this, pleases him because I believe him beyond my senses. I can't touch God. Uh, there's a story that's running through my mind about Thomas. The Bible says Jesus raises from the dead. The, he sends the women to go get disciples. Disciples come, Thomas doesn't go to the grave. They come back and say, Thomas, Jesus has risen from the grave. We went to the grave. He ain't there. Thomas says, unless I see him, touch him, feel him, I won't believe. Jesus shows up and says, Thomas, put your, hold, put your hands in my holes. You know, touch my side. And Thomas said, man, it really is you. And Jesus says, yes. And he says, Thomas, yeah, you believe because you see, but blessed are those, watch this, y'all, who believe and don't see. Blessed are those who believe and don't see. God wants you to know that he wants you to believe in that fashion. It, believe, it pleases him when you believe even though you can't see him. It's beyond my physical senses. I can't touch him, but I know that he's real. How do I know he's real? We used to sing this song growing up. I can feel him deep in my soul. Yes, God is real. He's real to me. I know what he's done in my life. I know what he's doing in my life. And I know what he will do because I know that he is real. It's a personal relationship. Because why? You must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Which means I got, there's something on my part. I got to come to him. And I got to diligently seek him. I come to him believing that he is. And my diligence in prayer, my diligence in word, my diligence in following him, my diligence in obeying him, calls him to release a reward. Which means that faith without works is dead. I can't just say I, I can't say I believe it. And there's no actions that are impacted by my belief system. Because what I believe dictates what I expect and what I expect dictates how I act. What I believe dictates what I expect. What I expect dictates how I act. If I believe I'm not smart, I expect not to be. Then I'll do things to confirm I'm not smart. If I feel like my life is going to be terrible. I expect it to always be terrible. And watch this. I do things to make sure it's terrible. If I believe something actions works must go along with my faith so this picture <laughs> this man sitting on his faith and all he has to do is learn to put his faith
to action and the car will move. If you learn to put your faith to action, God be, can begin to move in your life. So I can't say that I believe God and my actions don't follow suit. Hear me, young people. I got to act out what I believe. If I say I'm a Christian, I got to believe that I got to act like I'm a Christian. If I believe in God, I have to act like I believe in him. So how does faith come? Romans tells us that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, hearing by the words of Christ. That what I hear can introduce faith. What I hear can affect my faith. So I have to be careful about what you listen to. I've been telling the young people um, in our merge, merge, worship service when we were uh, open, put some Jesus music on your rotation. <laughs> because music feeds you. Music feeds you. Just because it has a, a nice beat that you like doesn't mean that it's not affecting you. Because there, there are words associated with the music. You got to be careful what you watch on TV. Because again, I got to be careful of what I'm feeding myself. Can't talk to everybody about everything deep. Because why? Words affect what I believe. So I got to make sure I'm in my word. So I can build my faith up because faith is built by knowledge. The more I know about him, the more I can believe in him. The more experience I have with God, the more faith I can have in him. So I got to be able to be a hearer, listen to service, listen on Sundays, listen on Wednesdays, listen on Saturday nights, you know, whatever. Be in your Bible. Hear the word of God. Put some Jesus music in your rotation, y'all. All right. I'm not going to sit there and act like. You know, uh, yeah, your Apple Music or your Spotify or Google Play, whatever y'all listen, however you listen to it. Your title is all Jesus music. Put some Jesus music in your rotation because words affect what you believe. I'll close on this part. Here's the thing I want you to do is learn to trust God. Now, if we were here in person, well, Maya's here with me right now, but I don't want to do it uh, on, on, on national TV, national Internet. Uh, we would do the trust fall and I would take somebody. I remember one, one time I did this. Um, I had, I brought a child up, one of the teenagers up and I said, do you trust me? Yeah, I do. And I had them do the trust fall with me and the person hesitated. And then my goddaughter was there and I said, come here. And I said, do you trust me? Yes. And she fell right back into my arms. And I, the analogy was the reason why there was no hesitancy with her fall because she was used to me catching her. She knew me, not just catching physically. We didn't practice the trust fall, but every other area of her life, she was used to me being there and being consistent. And time with me, knowledge with me, experience with me, produced that kind of faith that she had to trust me enough to fall back and believe that I can catch you. God is saying, trust me enough that if, you, if I ask you to fall back on me, I can catch you. If I ask you to trust me, you can trust me. He, he's not obligated to do what you want him to do. He's obligated to bring his will to pass in your life. He can catch you. And if you're not saved, he can catch you too. You're falling and God wants to catch you. He just wants you to give him the permission to put his hands out and catch you. If you're not saved, he wants you to Put your name in the comment section and give your life to the Lord. Make that commitment to follow Jesus. Come believing that he is. If you need to rededicate your life, you got caught up, um, lost your commitment. You stop diligently seeking him. You don't read your Bible. You don't pray. You don't really get into your, uh, your word or watch service. And during this hard time, you may have uh, went back to a lot of the old stuff, a lot of the old things. Now is the time for you to come back home. God wants you to rededicate your life to him. Put your name in the comment section. Someone will connect to you. Or go to our website, go to Bethany.com, and someone will connect to you. You want to connect to this church? You could do so also. Make that connection. Connect to this house. We'd love to have you as a part of our family, even those that are distant. About a couple hours away, um, especially our young folk, your, your, your mom, dad can't get here. You know, or they don't go to church, but you want to connect. You can connect um, to be a part of uh, this church. 
put your name in the comment section or you can email connectionschurch at gotobethany.com. And it's connectionschurch at gotobethany.com. Uh, at this time, you can give. Um, we teach our young people to give. Sit down with them uh, at the computer. All the information is on the screen right now. And whatever, whatever device you're on, teach them how to give. Walk them through the process as you give to God right now. You tithe, you're offering a sacrifice. Um, you can do so tonight uh, for this Emerge Worship Service, especially teach our young people to do so. Give them some, you know, back in church, you give them a quarter, give them a dime, give them a dollar, let them give an offering. Do it virtually now because we believe God in this process that giving does change things. All right, y'all, we hope you enjoyed today's lesson. We'll be back next week with some more on the kingdom and faith as we talk about how Jesus taught on faith and the kingdom of God. We love you. We appreciate you. We miss you guys. And we'll talk to you soon.